It says we're live, so I assume we're live. Uh, chat. Okay. Chat, tell us whether or not we're live. Uh, well, hello and welcome to the Level With Us live cast. This is me, your host, Marco DeSantos, also known as the Mechanic Critic, and with me uh, is my new co-host, the one, the only, the project, project manager extraordinaire himself. Josh or Ithri. Hey guys, welcome back to the, the bi monthly stream. Bi weekly, bi monthly. I don't know. English is a weird language. Um, I, I'm, I'm very excited to, you know, show off what's happening this stream. Uh, as people might notice, we don't have video today because um, we're just going to be showing off a bunch of Mega Man All Stars. And I think it's better to just show the game itself than show our video. Uh, Josh and I are just going to, like, you know, talk for a little bit, maybe, like, five minutes about, you know, how we've been doing uh, and all that stuff. So, Josh, how, how, how have you been? I haven't talked to you on this show for a week. So, like, you know. Yeah, I mean, you kind of know how I'm doing. Yeah, that's which true. Is, which is okay, I guess. Um, uh, that's life. <laughs> we got, you know, I'm, I'm fine. We've got a lot of projects we're kind of juggling. You know, some we've announced, some we haven't, and uh, right, it's right. it's kind of crunch time, right? Season five of Exceed is slowly getting done, and it's it's taking a little thought. You know, approvals is a very time consuming thing, but we're getting there. So it's been a little frustrating with that, but other than that, there's been some cool new stuff we're working on that we uh, hope to announce sooner than later. No, um, I know I've kind of been saying that every stream, but uh, soon, soon trademark. Soon, Derry? Uh, not in the content that we're releasing that I'm aware of. Alright. Yeah. Fine. Fine. I guess, I guess, yeah, there's no, you don't have any soon characters besides, like, White Ash, <laughs> I guess. The real soon character was the friends we made along the way. Um, I don't know. How about you, Marco? How are you doing? Well, welcome to the Thunderdome. How am I doing? How I'm doing is this live cast. Like, this live cast will basically show off my entire existence you know what i mean like once we started mm -hmm. talking about the Mega Man stuff that's been my life i've lived breathed eaten drank swam Mega Man for like the past two weeks um see i've been like the complete opposite i've been purposefully avoiding meg and so that i can come into the stream with zero knowledge of the new version all right this is gonna be so, a, this is gonna be a, fun a captive time. audience Right, welcome, welcome, chat. Uh, it's A Moose. Hi, Dice Throne Podcast. Hello, uh, Pidgeot, Pidgeot Tamer. Haha, -ha, I almost read that wrong. Somebody kick Marco out. Kick me out of what? Life? Honestly, that's real. Too real. Kick me out of life. Um, I I'm done. So anime. Um, <laughs> all right. Uh, so I, I I think that's enough uh, shooting the breeze, shooting the birds. Uh, let's 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 move on to the TTS. All right. Hopefully people can see the TTS screen. Uh, tell me otherwise. Tell me if it is otherwise. Is that the correct English? English is whack, dude. Like I can never fully understand the English language. So it's it's fine. I can understand you. All right. That's great. That's great. All right, everyone. Uh, welcome to Mega Man All Stars. Uh, people who are coming from the uh, the Discord probably know about this already or probably have seen this version because I stream it, like, five times a week! <laughs> it's gonna be okay, Josh. It's gonna be okay. <laughs> I'm, I'm just gonna leave you out there on that one that you've made for yourself. Uh... But yeah, I mean, it, this this looks you know this looks a bit different than the last ver, so I'm I'm interested to see what is new here. All right, so you know, for for the for this stream, we're just going to be kind of talking about how the game works. We're not going to play a game or anything. We're just going to kind of go through how the current version works for those who might not be aware, right? Like myself. So for people who have never played this game before, never seen it before, this is Mega Man All Stars, uh, a game that we're working with Jasco Games on. Uh, to give to all of you, which will feature um, a lot of the Mega Man stuff that you know and enjoy. Uh, this is Cutman. Uh, this is sorry. This is Quick Man, and you don't see him in frame because he's too quick. Um, this is what happens when you rapid prototype and just keep making new cards. Oh, I thought that was the joke, as you purposefully offset the art. I didn't purposely offset it, but when I saw it, I just left it like that because I'm like, ah, that that makes sense, right? He's too quick. He's not in frame. Um, 
So Mega Man All-Stars is kind of like... How do I put it? It's a cooperative boss rush game. Um, that's quick. It's kind of like a tableau builder, right? You're built, you're putting a bunch of chips together. It's a... Right. So the, the main mechanic here is what we call routining or routines. Um, so each character, uh, I'll put it on the F3's board here, actually starts off uh, with a core. So this is Mega Man's core. And they actually start off with a set of um, cards. So usually they would start with this starting four, this Mega Buster, this Jump, this Slide, and this other Mega Buster, which points in a different direction. That's important uh, for for reasons that I will explain. Is that Wily Machine final boss? Uh, so yes, Wily. This is a Wily Machine again. This is this is prototyped components. So like none of the graphic design is completely final or whatever. But I'll explain how the bosses work in a little bit. Oh, what was that? Okay. Uh, but this is how characters work first. So this is Mega Man's core. Uh, Mega Man has two sides to him, A and B. You can actually choose whichever side you want. So, uh, I don't know. Apropos of nothing, Josh, just pick a side. Okay. Take damage for an ally. Uh, I can take one less damage. Activate weapons by spending fewer weapon energy. Oh, but the power goes down. Uh, sure. I'll just pick this A side. So when you pick your your core side, you can start like building your routine. The routine is the, made up of your core plus these chips, as we call them. These are separate card components. And note that the dimensions of these cards matter. Your core is a three inch by three inch card piece. Your chips are two inch by three inch card pieces. Um, because the way this works is that you have to line up the cards to give yourself a routine. There are a few restrictions. You can't orphan cards, which is our like in development term for you have to be able to reach that card from your core. So like, you know, you can't just put slide somewhere here and then say, ah, yes, that's part of my routine. It doesn't work that way. Nothing connects to it, right? In fact, even something like putting jump here and then slide here, slide is still not valid, right? Because there's no way to get the slide because you go to jump and then like there's nothing that points into slide. Oh, you have, really? You can't do that anymore. All right. Right, right, right. You have to find ways to put your arrows. You, you, the arrows dictate where you can go, right? So, okay. like, currently from my Mega Man's core, I can move my mini to Mega Buster, Mega Buster, or Jump, right? So that's one, that's one restriction. The other restriction is you can't have arrows pointing into each other. So I can't do this, for example. Oh, that's a thing again, too. Okay. Right, right. Interesting. So we, in testing, we've realized that letting arrows point into each other creates a lot of two-step infinite loops. where Yeah, you just, just go back and forth, spam right. stuff. So the quote-unquote puzzle of creating your routine is just completely gone. You just pick two chips that you like and just cycle between them ad infinitum, right? Right. Um, so you want to try to create a path that kind of lets you get to everything. Will the chips be cards or tiles? We have no confirmation on that. Um... That's a Jasco decision. That's a Jasco decision, indeed. Um, so, what do you call this? Um, so now Josh is building his routine. Uh, and this looks like an... Oh, no, that's not illegal. Slide cam. Wait, what's not legal? You were about to put it here, right? That's not Yeah, legal. yeah, yeah. I, this can't really connect to my primary routine, so I guess I can just put this here. This is probably a terrible routine that is right. not very optimal. Because Josh doesn't know the other secret rule that we've just added, which is called core hopping. So people who've played this version, this game before, or have seen this game before, will notice that there are some chips like jump and slide that say, when, you may move again when you enter this chip. Development-wise, I call this a hopper chip, because you land on it and then you hop off of it again. Or you can hop past it, right? Um, this allows you to create uh, faster loops. Brad and I and the playtesters have realized that's not okay because it actually does the same thing as the two arrows pointing into each other thing. It just negates like a large portion of the the routine building algorithm, right? Right. Because you're just like, oh, well, I want to get to this chip, but I can't. So let me just hop over it, right? Like that just negates like part of the puzzle, right? So we've actually... I've kept this here to just show people what it used to look like, but these chips no longer have this you may move and move again when you enter this chip clause. So they you can't hop over jumps and slides anymore in the new version. 
Sure, that makes sense. Right. So people are then going to ask, all right, so what's the wrinkle that you've put into the chip routine building thing? Josh, here's the, here's the, here's the gimme. The core is now a predetermined hopper chip. So you can hop across your core whenever you want. But almost oh, no okay. other chips in the game hop you. So now you have to build around your core, you know, much like its name. This is the way we've decided to implement this to prevent what you usually do, Josh, which is just build one path <laughs> that goes right. up, away from your core and never goes back, right? Mm -hmm. uh, so now a lot of people in testing are actually building cores like this. Um, this is just an example, right? But like, Yeah, yeah. a path that lets you get back to the core to get to the other side. Right. Because now you can go Mega Buster, slide, core, hop to Mega Buster, jump, hop to Mega Buster, Mega Arm, right? So now you can, you most of the pathing is like your infinity symbol or, you know, you crisscross into your core. So, yeah, you still form a path, you just have to integrate it in your core, which which makes sense. It's, it is a core. So, right. that's it's, fair. It's literally called a core. So um, that's how chip building works. Uh and this is very important because your path determines your actions during the, you know, during the fights, right? Like when you go onto your Mega Buster, you do the Mega Buster. When you go onto a slide, you slide, right? Um, let's talk a little bit about the anatomy of a chip. I think Mega Arm and Slide will be all we need. So Mega Arm is an attack from Mega Man, right? It has this six... This is an extra chip I got. It's not part of my basic kit. It is I... part of your basic kit. Oh, it is? Okay. You get the Mega Arm, because you're Mega Man. Roll would get the Roll oh, Buster. Oh, everybody has, like, a specific... Oh, okay, that's cool. Yeah, Proto Man gets Proto Shield. Um, and, of course, if you're playing as a Robot Master, which you can, by the way, because, you know, for example, Top Man is here. Um, if you play as a Robot Master, then you just get their weapon, you know? You get Top Spin, right. you get uh, Super Arm if you're a Guts Man, etc., etc. Okay, but here's the point, right? This Mega Arm has a few things about it. Uh, it deals six damage it costs one weapon energy to use and you start with three weapon energy every fight and you see this little box here that's called your react or your defense box when you get attacked by an enemy you can uh you can do the effect in the square we we, we tap I, we, I don't know what we call it. We exhaust we exhaust or tap the mini. In real life, you'd probably just tip your mini over, right? Um, sure. To, to, and then you gain defenses. Oh, it balanced. We gain defenses based on what's inside that box after paying the appropriate cost. So by tapping and then uh, spending one weapon energy, which you do by flipping that over, uh, you can reflect two damage and reflect this basically means you know if i'm taking three damage i instead take one damage and then the person attacking me takes two damage right right whereas slide is just a flat block damage right so if it i was the art. yeah if i was taking three damage i would take no damage but my opponent would not take damage either right so that's that's how chips are um slide is very important only because it has effect text right so when you prevent damage with this chip you may move that's it so when you block with slide, you slide over to another chip, right? Mm -hmm. Okay, so that's literally, like, how player characters work. And that's literally, like, all you need to know about, like, how to set up your routine and uh, the kind of options that you get for, by, like, building your routine in a specific way. Why does this matter? Now, people might be asking. Why, why does this freaking matter? Because the way this game is played is that we fight against robot masters and these are the bosses because uh, it again is a cooperative boss rush game so um on here you will see crash man let's just talk about crash man a little bit crash man when he comes into play actually does his green routine immediately like you know before everything else in the game he just does his green routine period right so his green routine says, oh, by the way, in case it wasn't clear, um, these are routines. <laughs> um, so Crash Man, when he comes into play, it says draw a minion. So we will draw a minion, it'll come into play. Each RM, which is short for Robot Master, gains a Fortify. Fortify is one of the many status effects in this game. So we have many status effects here. I'll talk more about them as they become relevant. For now, all you need to know is that Fortify essentially acts as a block four for the boss. 
and he has a react. A react is anything with this exclamation point before it. Again, graphic design not final, whatever, right? Like, this is just us doing testing. Um, which means that if Crashman gets targeted by an attack, he performs the text on this. So in this case, he would advance one routine. Um, Crashman's um, gimmick, I guess you could say it, is that he? Um, the more you attack him, the more he decides to crash into you. So, um, see, uh, on the back of each robot master, you'll actually see this uh, little character select screen thing. Um, and there's a few things that I want to talk about in the anatomy of that. But more importantly, right now, is that each robot master gets a little line underneath Josh that says, "Hey, here's what they do," right? All right. Okay. Cool. They also have those symbols on the side, which I assume like weapon weakness right so this is this is the weapon that crash man uses right crash bomb is a bomb weapon right this is the weapon that crash man is weak to um mm -hmm. i believe he is weak to the airman weapon i forgot what airman's weapon is called i'm sorry mega man fans uh, right resetting i'll talk about that in the actual combat of the game um don't worry about it so uh so again Crashman summons a minion, he gains a fortify. When the minion is summoned, it comes in and has his own mini routine. Minions are basically just super basic routines. They always move down one space, and they just do whatever the box that they land on says. Robot Masters are a bit more complicated than that. Um, during the Robot Master's turn, we roll this thing called the Command Dice, uh, which dictates how many spaces down the Robot Master goes. So they can go down one, uh, two... Or three spaces. Uh, I'll tell you what the L and R mean later on. So, for example, you know, on your turn, Josh, just just take a turn, right, against Crashman. Sure. Um. So I could move to Mega Arm here. All right. Oh my core. Sure. I I like that. I like that. So you start with three weapon energy. You use one of them. Spend one to use Mega Arm. All right. You Mega Arm Crashman, and then Crashman was targeted by an attack, right? So he'll advance one routine. Right, and he prevents four of that damage because of his fortify. Right, so he loses his fortify to prevent four of that damage. He starts with 12 health, now he only has 10 health, right? Because you're dealing six. Right. Now the the enemies go. All minions uh, resolve first. So Blocky goes down one, and he does nothing, right? So this is, tends to be what minions do a lot. They tend to do a lot of nothing, and they tend to just do damage... Um, discreetly, but we'll talk about how they deal damage when that becomes relevant. Again, I'm just gonna... Uh, air Shooter! Air Shooter! There you go, Air Shooter. Thanks, everyone. Thanks, chat. Okay, now Crashman takes his turn. Uh, so roll the die, Josh. See what Crashman... What terrible things Crashman will do to you. 2R. Uh, so we go down 1, 2. Uh, let's, let's ignore what R means for now, okay? Okay. So this is Sticky Bomb. Direct, which means that it targets a player. So it's targeting Josh right now. Jo that means Josh takes four damage. Josh, are you going to take that four damage sitting down? Uh, I'm going to reflect it with my Mega Arm. All right, so Mega Arm reflects two of that four damage. Josh then only takes two damage. And then Crashman himself yeah. takes two damage. Then it says I also here, get two flame. gains yeah. two flame. This is another one of the status effects. You, when you gain... A status effect, you put it anywhere on your board, but you cannot put it on a chip that already has that same status effect. So Josh is going to put the flame on his Mega Buster, and Josh is going to put the flame on his other Mega Buster. So this is uh, technically the cool thing about status effects, is that they apply both to bosses and to players. When they get applied to players, they actually go into discrete areas on your routine. Which means that the moment you step into them, they start procking. Uh, for fire, I believe you just take two damage when you step on it. Because it's too and hot. And then it goes away. Yeah, right? then it goes away, right? So that means that if you somehow have a chip that's just like somewhere off the side of your board and you're not really planning to use it, you can just offload the fire there and you'll probably never take that damage, right? Right. Just jump, bruh. Punches Crash Band in the face. That's totally true. Hey, it's Walter. What's up? All right, so now the boss has taken his turn, uh, and now it is the player's turn again. So notice how the turns are super quick, right? Josh moved this piece, did a thing. Uh, enemies move down, do a thing. That's done, 
like less than a minute, right? If I'm not even explaining any of the rules, less than a minute and a turn has already completed. Josh, it's your turn again, but oh no, Josh. I'm at the end of my path. Yes, because you have no and more no arrows anywhere. pointing out of your current chip, which means you can't move anywhere. This is the other thing that you can do during your turn, which is you are forced to reset. Resetting uh, instantly teleports you to your core, regardless of where you are on the board. And you regain all your weapon energy. So this is how you get your okay. weapon energy back. So let's assume, for example, that we've beaten some enemies prior in the turn. And Josh, there's some chips in the supply, right? When you rest, Josh, in addition to just doing what you did, which is go back to your core and get some extra... And get your weapon energy back... You, you can look at the chips in your supply. So go up here, Josh. And now we have mm -hmm. some chips to pick from. Do I start with chips in my supply? Or are these ones I've gained through gameplay? That These are ones you gain through, through gameplay, and I'll tell you how you gained them as it becomes relevant. But for now, I just want to pretend that we have some, right? I want this. Okay, so we want Crystal Eye, for example. So that's one of the things you can do. You can take one of the chips in the supply and then integrate it into your routine mid-fight. So I can't rearrange anything. I can just put this. Right. You can just shove it in. You can't move the oh, other okay. chips. So I got to be careful about when I make my original configuration so that these can integrate. Properly. Or just have a configuration that's so good you don't need to integrate. Right? Right. That's true. That's illegal. I'll put it here. Oh, yeah, because it can't go anywhere. Um, and we can't rotate or anything, right? No, nope, you're to not be... top man. Top man can rotate, but you can't rotate. Okay, I guess I guess it can go here then. All right, so I can you... hop over my core. So yeah, that makes sense. So now you have crystal eye in here. That's great. Uh, one thing to note is that there's another thing you could do. In let's say you hated all of the chips that were in the supply and you don't want any, right? Right. Well, you can just dumpster one of them and throw them into the discard. And gain a permanent upgrade to your weapon energy. So now you have four. Is that in addition to gaining chips from Kid or instead of? Uh, instead of. Okay. So you have to choose, right, between one of those right. two. Mm -hmm. So now you All have right, Crystal Eye. I'll take the Crystal Eye, yeah. I like All that. right. You have Crystal Eye integrated into your routine, uh, and you've <laughs> rested, which means the enemies go again. Blocky is now attacking with a fling. Now, this is very important. Um, all minions actually do indirect attacks. So notice how Crashman did a direct attack here. Um, he also has an indirect attack. And all minions implicitly just have indirect attacks. What's an indirect attack? Well, other than yourself, there's actually a second health pool here called the lab or the city. We just call it the lab, right? Actually, all indirect attacks target the lab. And if the lab dies, you, g you lose. And if you die, you lose. Can I jump in the way and take the damage for the lab? And this is why we're heroes. We're mega heroes. Super fighting robot Mega Man and any of the other players can choose to intercept. No, I'm no hero. Like, the lab can take that damage. All right. I was just wondering if I can do that. Yeah, okay. So you can, obviously, uh, intercept the attack from the blocky and take it instead of the lab. Right? Uh, which right. could the crash be going to attack me. Right. So, Which could be useful if, for example, you were on a block card. So you can right. go in between Blocky and the lab and then block for the lab, right? Otherwise... But I can only block once a turn. I, if Crashman attacked me after, I couldn't block right, Crashman because exactly. I'd be tapped. Yeah, Yeah. so you, you have that's kind of like the decision you have to make. Do I let them damage the lab? Do I um, save my block for myself? Because it's also... Right, Blocky deals four damage to it, and also says here lose two life, so Blocky itself <laughs> takes damage. Right, so Blocky will kill himself eventually. Right. Um, so um, there, there we go. Uh, now that Blocky's taken their turn, uh, Crashman goes to so roll the dice. See what dangerous things Crashman does to you. Two D, two L. This is another thing. So if this is final bomber, if this is. It's an indirect attack that deals one damage, which means it's targeting the lab. Are you just gonna let... Okay, we let the lab take it. Notice how this also has effect text. This says, if this is Crashman's second round, plus 10 power. Otherwise, each player gains the flame. So, it's not his second round, it's his first. I'll tell you what rounds are later. But now Josh has to gain another flame. Hmm. <laughs> 
Josh's oh dear is basically my entire experience with these chip layouts. It's fair. <laughs> Alright, so Josh has gained fire. Um, it's hot fireness. And now it's Josh's turn again. Turns are quick. Turns are snappy. Let's go. So I'm going to go to Crystal. I'm going to use Mega Man's core ability to pay one less weapon G to use it. So it'll do seven damage instead of eight. Okay, who are you dealing that seven to? Uh, I could. What happens when I beat a minion? Do I get... Sure, uh, just kill the minion. Something? Just kill the minion. Sure, I'll kill the minion. All so right. I do seven damage to the minion. So the minion gets um, exploded. Now this causes a chip to generate from the store. So that's how you get chips there, by killing minions and killing the bosses. Right. So now I have another option when I reset. Right, right. right. Or if I reset. So, so mm -hmm. now the minions would go. Um, but as we see, uh, there are no more minions left. So Crashman would go again. Right, so roll to see what crazy stuff Crashman's about to do to you. What are the L's and R's on these dice? Oh, I'll, I'll tell you about that soon. All right, so he rolls one. So actually, one thing I want to note here is that even if Crashman rolled a three, he would still just end up on this routine, always. Yeah, when you get to the end, you just go to the top. All right, that's a termination routine. So uh, for this one, he draws another minion, uh, which we spawn in, and he also gains another fortify. So I think that's enough, and people kind of get what's going on here, right? Mm -hmm. um, one thing I do want to note is that if Crashman does make another full round, instead of going a loop again, he escapes. Uh, did you freeze him? Right. Yeah, with Crystal Eye. Cool. Uh, yeah, then it, it got cleansed anyway. Oh, wait, no, I targeted the minion, that's right. So no, it says all it. targets, right? Crashman is a target. Oh, okay. Is a target, okay. Right, but he already used it up, right? Because he rolled right. afterwards, so it's fine. Anyway, if he was to make another full round, he would escape instead of looping. And what escape does is that it deals 10 damage to the lab, and you can't stop it. Like, the lab just loses 10 life. You can't intercept it, you can't block it, whatever. The lab just takes 10 damage. So, essentially, all Robot Masters have an internal clock that uh, pressure you to kill them as fast as possible. Which is kind of like the decision point, right? You have the minions that you can kill... To give yourself more chips, right? But if you do that, you're taking time away from killing the actual goal of the game, which is to kill these boys, right? Uh -huh. Okay, chat. Lincoln Memorial. Oh no. Tomb hold. Totally not grave hold. Come on, everyone. Come on. Okay. In a normal game, I'd be fighting like multiple robots, right? So, in a normal game, and this is something that we need to point out, this is a cooperative game. So in reality, fights aren't this simple. <laughs> I was just doing it for the benefit of people who have no idea what's going on. Because uh, in reality, if we were to enter into a fight, I would be here on the other side as, say, Quick Man, right? Uh, with, I, you know, I'm not even going to look for Quick Boomerang because I don't want to hold up the stream too much. Um, right, but you would have your own layout and we would have more bosses to... So I would have my own layout over here, you know, and then uh, Needleman would be here as well. Um, so let's just assume that we're starting a fight like this and, you know, let's just get rid of all the flames on your board or whatever, right? So let's just assume that Josh and I have set up, you know, we're cool, we, we want to fight these two bosses. So we actually go in a specific order. Bosses resolve in a specific order. Uh, you just get to choose, but make sure the order is consistent, right? So I always go bottom top. So, you know, Crashman does the thing he did last time. He'll summon a minion. You know, it'll have this. Uh, each robot master gains a fortify. And then Needleman would go. Needleman would go here. He, Needleman would also draw a minion. Uh, he has no other effect decks. So now we have two minions, two robot masters... So why, why is this L and R relevant, people might ask. Well, Robot Masters actually target specific uh, specific players based on their oh, dice roll. Oh, okay. Right. So there's no more so like... So they target the person to their left or right. Yes. So you are on Crashman's left, I am on Crashman's right, but I'm on Needleman's left, and uh, you're on Needleman's right. Get it? Uh-huh. Right, because uh, it's assumed like the robot masters are like Yeah, this. you would be positioning it differently. 
Right. Right. So, um, I'm just doing this for the benefit of the stream, but, like, you know, in the real game, you would probably put Needleman like this, right? And then I would be on the board sideways like this, right? Mm -hmm. You know, to make that make more sense. And then you would be on the board sideways here, right? Right. So, what are our legal targets? Technically, for all intents and purposes, our legal targets are the Robot Master to your left, the Robot Master to your right, and any minion that exists, Right. Right, so in a three-player game, that would matter a little more. That would definitely matter a little more. So assuming we have a three-player game, right, um, I'm just going to use the cores to represent this, right? This is what a three-player game would look like. So Mega Man can target Needle Man and Crash Man. Quick Man can target Crash Man and Wood Man. Gemini Man can target Needle Man and Wood Man. But conversely, Wood Man can only hit Gemini Man and Quick Man. Crash Man can only hit Mega Man and Quick Man. And Needleman can only hit Mega Man and Gemini Man. But you, me, and Gemini Man can hit any of the minions whenever you want. Mm -hmm. So um, this also works uh, in the other way, right? Um, let's say Quick Man dies during this fight. That's not player elimination, by the way, because at the end of it, your friends can revive you. But let's say that Quick Man dies. Now, who's the player to the left of Woodman? Well, that was originally Quick Man, but now it's Mega Man. So now two right, robot, so masters. robot Masters can hit me. Right, exactly. But the, con the converse is also true. If Woodman got eliminated, who's the Robot Master to the right of Quick Man? Well, now it's Needle Man. So now we're ganging up on the Robot Masters themselves. Right, that makes sense. So that's how it scales with player count. This game goes from one player to four players... And I do want to make it clear, one player is not actually what you saw where Josh is just playing against Crash Man. One player is actually one player controlling two separate robots. So one player and two player are technically the same game. For now. Alright, let's read what chat is saying. Yes, uh, yes chat, it is technically just a functional separate product now. Uh, it doesn't... I don't even think it remotely looks like the original game, right? <laughs> um, yeah, from what I understand, it's not related to Mega Man Board Game, which is why it's called Mega Man All-Stars, not like Mega Man Board Game 2 right, or right. Remastered or anything like that. Yeah, this is like a fully co-op game too, right? The other one isn't even co-op, right? It's like PvP-ish. Hmm. All right, so um, there you go. That's... So, yeah. Anything, anything else about... So what happens when we beat the rope? So, so let's say... Get, let's say Wily or... Let's, apropos of nothing, let's yeet uh, Crash Man off the board. Let's say we kill him, right? That would spawn a random chip. Right. And then you would search the deck for uh, a chip that matches his symbol. So this is kind of like how we represent you getting the Crash Bomber when you kill him, right? Right. So let's say, you know, we get Chain Blast from Mega Man 11. <laughs> That's fine. But there you go. Um, we're still thinking about whether or not there's, like, some sort of variant where, like, you know, at the start of the game when you pick Crash Man to be your enemy, Crash Bomber goes underneath him so that when you kill him, you're guaranteed to get Crash Bomber. Oh, you just set it aside, right? Yeah, or something like that. Uh, we haven't discussed It'd be this. nice, but it might be a little little finicky. I mean, it's, th it's the same amount of time. finicky, right? It's the same amount of finicky because you'd have to search every time when you beat them anyway. Yeah, so I guess it'd be nice if you could get the, the specific weapon. Right. Um, so so that that's a thing. Um, again, not And then we can, much. like, heal the lab and heal ourselves and so rearrange our... So when you beat the robot master, right, now we have supply. So we can still do the same things that we could do when we were resetting, right? You can integrate chips into your board. You can get rid of a chip for a permanent weapon energy, but you gain access to a few new actions. <laughs> Uh, mainly, like Josh said, you can now start moving the pre the previously placed chips as well. So you can actually just fully respect your entire board between each fight. That's one, right? Um, you can also flip your core to its other side. Oh, cool. That's neat. Right. Uh, and number three, which is a new option, is you can dumpster a chip to heal yourself, an ally, or the lab for five health. Oh, okay, so there's not money anymore. Your chips are essentially money. Right, so there's literally no money in this game. Chips are just worth yeah. one weapon energy, they go into your routine, or they heal you. That's it. Yeah, that's, that's super clean. 
Yeah, super clean, no more having to track Just... bolts or whatever. Right. I think, well, I believe it's Kickstarter, friends. I believe it's Kickstarter. Uh, I don't have a date yet, sorry. I think that's something Jasko has to announce. Yeah, it's a Jasko thing. We don't, we're just, we're just making the game. We're not doing anything with it. We're just designing the system. Right, right. Because those are actually two separate things. People don't usually realize that. Um, okay, so I know it's looking like a bit of a mess because, you know, I'm just trying to show everything off here. But let's uh, delete some of these components to make it more grokkable. So, um... In case people haven't realized, the way the game works is that you get stronger progressively over time. Now, people might ask, is there something that mitigates that? Then, you know, do the robot masters get harder over... No, they don't, actually. Um, at the start of the game, you actually create your own robot master character select screen like so. This is, by the way, the coolest part of this game, I think, is that... Um, and then you put your final boss in the center. So it literally looks like a Mega Man character boss stage select screen. I think that's one of the coolest parts. So the moment that all of your robot masters that you've chosen have been beaten, um, there's no escalating on the robot masters end, actually. They, they, the fights just get easier as you go. Much like in real Mega Man, right? Because in real Mega Man, you get more weapons, you get more E-tanks, you get more rushes... You get more whatevers, right? Like, it, the game gets easier as you go on. But, much like in the real Mega Man, the difficulty of the game suddenly spikes at the end when you fight the final boss. Because, when you fight the final boss, Wily goes into the center of the board, and he replaces the minions. He is essentially a Mega Minion, right? But he functions exactly like a Robot Master, right? He has his own command dice, um... Oh, where, where are the command die? Josh, where? I accidentally deleted it, didn't I? Whatever. But he works like a robot master. You roll the die, you go down, you do the routines. Um, unlike robot masters, though, Wily doesn't run away, right? It's a final boss. He will kill you or the lab, or you will kill him. That's, that's the goal. But wait a minute. <laughs> Is it just Wily? Nope. <laughs> There's also a list of sub-bosses that you have to fight alongside Wily. So, for example, here we're fighting the Mecha Dragon in QP. There's also Copy Robot and, you know, the Yellow Devil uh, for fans of Mega Man. Um, and they come in and they essentially function as more Robot Masters, right? So rather than just having Robot Masters and, a min and Minions, you have essentially one extra Robot Master you have to, cont to contend with. And no, Wily's no pushover. This guy's dealing like 7 damage, dealing like 2 damage to all players, etc. He's, he's tough. He's really tough. And the, the bosses, what they do a lot of the time is that they have their own gimmicks. You know, QP buffs bosses. Copy Robot copies you. Um, Yellow Devil deals a lot of damage, but that's just all he does. He just He's a stat stick, essentially. And Mecha Dragon doesn't deal as much damage, but he's a, he's a disruptor. He causes chips in your routine to fly off your routine. So, that's the so do I point. have to beat Wily? Just Wily, or do I have to beat all of them? Technically, so you just have to beat Wily. But okay. there's a there's a there's a there's kind of like a problem there, uh, where you Wily takes less damage the more bosses are still alive. Right. So you kind of you can deal with the bosses, and it makes the Wily fight easier. Right. Right. Um, and you would get more chips, I assume, if you beat them. Yeah, you would get more chips. Um, as you beat them, and yeah, so so the goal is to kill Wily and his sub bosses at the end of the game, right? Um, mm. Usually, the, what players have been doing is that they kill the sub bosses and they kill Wily, right? Uh, because again, it's so hard to kill Wily if you don't kill the sub bosses first. That's good. It sounds like that's working as intended. Right. Um, is there anything else that we need to talk about here? Yes. One thing that we didn't mention is uh, how weapon weaknesses work. Mm hmm. Uh, I picked the Do you robot still master pick the, the number they roll on the dice? Or? Yeah, so that's that's essentially it. So when you hit the robot master with its weakness, you don't deal extra damage or whatever. Instead, uh, we kind of take that like more modern Mega Man approach where the robot master's pattern changes, right? Like you know when you when you hit, um, gosh, was that like Pump Man? When you like hit Pump Man with his weakness, like Pump Man's attack pattern changes, right? Like, you know, something breaks in him and then he can't do a certain kind of his attack anymore, right? Um, that's kind of how it works. And we model that by 
you essentially get to pick what the Robot Master does. Period. So it eliminates the randomness of how the Robot Master works, and it literally just lets you pick the worst thing for the Robot Master to do to themselves, right? Mm. So that's how you mitigate that randomness. Uh, chat. All right. Cool. Uh, and that's that's Mega Man. Not Mega Man nice. the board game. It's Mega Man All Stars. Mega Man All Stars. Yes, yeah, Mega Man All Stars. One other mechanic that is new to this version, um, which is going to be my last point, is every time you beat a set of Robot Masters. So when we, you know, when we beat um, Needle Man and Crash Man earlier, you actually gain a new mechanic, Josh. And this is new. You gain one of these chits. Uh, we don't have components for them yet. They're called gears. Right? Like Power Gear and Speed mm -hmm. Gear from Mega Man 11. Actually, they, they were in Mega Man 8. It's just that you couldn't use them. The Robot Masters got to use them. So after each fight, you get this. Uh, so that means, you know, in your first fight, you have zero. In your second fight, you have one. In your third fight, you have two. And by the end of it, like, you know, you would have four. And I would have four. Right? But right. one thing to note is that there's only... There's, the number of rounds changes based on the number of players, right? In three-player, there would only be three rounds, not four, right? Because you would only have to fight eight Robot Masters with three Robot Masters each. In four players, there are only two rounds, right? You fight one set of four and then another set of four. Which means that when you go into the final boss fight, you actually only have two if you're four players, right? So basically, between all the players, there will be around eight uh, eight of these gears, right? So in two player, each of us has four, but in four players, each of us has two. Make sense? Hmm. So what can you do with these gears? They're cool. Um, during your turn, at any point in time, you can spend one of these gears, and only one. You can't spend more than one a turn, right? If you do, just gain one of the listed bonuses on the gear. So you can either get plus two power on your attack. So for example, Crystal Eye will deal 10 damage now, right? Or you can move one. So, for example, you're on Mega Man's core. I want a Crystal Eye, though. So you can Mega Buster and then say, oh, I speed gear into the Crystal Eye and then Crystal Eye instead. Oh, okay. And these, I assume, restore after the fight ends? So when the fight ends, you gain all uses of the previously used ones back and you gain another you one. Another one. But, again, resetting doesn't do that. Ending the fight does. Right? So you only have right. four of them for the entire fight, or one of them, two of them, three of them, for the entire fight. So you have fight. to be careful when right. you use them. Well, not necessarily careful, but you have to make it count when you use them. You just you don't just throw them out willy-nilly, right? Right. Right. And what happens if you lose? Is it just game over? Or, like, you said that you can heal between rounds, but what if everybody loses? So, uh, there's two lose conditions in the game. The lab dies, mm. or all the players right. die. Hmm. So it's possible that I die and you live, and that's completely fine. So long well, as you if I them. heal you between rounds, right? In, in between you rounds, you're gonna have to spend a chip to heal me back up to five, right? Right. So that's it. That's Mega Man All Stars. Um, it's a very simple game. A lot of the fun comes from the routine building mechanics, um, and if people want to play this game, well, I have news for you. I'm about to run a playtest for it. So if you want to get in, play this game now. I'm going to put a chat. I'm going to put a link in chat right now. And you can join the Discord. And uh, join my game. We're not going to be streaming that here. We're going to be um, doing it on the Discord. Uh, so feel free to join my tests. I test like every <laughs> Wednesday... Thursday, Friday, my time, but it's probably Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, your time. Uh, PST at 7 p.m. and 9 p.m. So um, the schedule for the full schedule for that is in the uh, in the Discord. So Josh, uh, are you excited to play some Mega Man in the future? Hopefully, maybe. Yeah, actually, I mean, I liked the old version that I played a couple weeks, ago, and this version just seems a lot cleaner and and quicker and what. So yeah. Yeah. I would I would definitely play this again. Absolutely. And I'll probably have to. But <laughs> I'll be looking forward to it. Absolutely based. Oh, I've never talked about how minions interact with their weaknesses. Um, 
But that's fine. Look, if you hit Blocky with a rock, regardless of how much damage that rock chip does, and regardless of how much health Blocky has, Blocky instantly explodes. Right. Oh, that's nice. Okay. Yeah. So no more tracking that. Does he over... Where's their... Yeah? Where's their weapon weakness on the card, though? Oh, it just says it. There would be a symbol there. Yeah, there would be a symbol, but, like, I'd, I didn't bother with the symbols, right? This is... Pr none of the graphic Prototype. design is final. Prototype, right? right. Prototype. Does he overheat from overuse like an 11? So, technically, the overheat is the fact that you can't use it anymore after you use one of them, right? So, let's say you only had one and you used it. Well, now you've overheated and you don't have any more gears, right? So, that's how we've kind of modeled that overheat mechanic. Um... All right, so there you go. Um, oh, by the way, in case you didn't know, chat, uh, it's probably going to be a thing where every Robot Master is playable. Like, you know, if you can fight Woodman, you can be the Woodman. Yeah, we're looking at doing, what, 1 through 11 hopefully, right now? Hopefully. <laughs> That's the plan. Right, we currently have 1 through 3 right now. So, uh, mm. <laughs> 8 more to go. Yeah, there's going to be a lot of content. I don't... Well, again, it's a jazz question on where that content goes. I don't... That's going to be all in the same box, or if it's going to be split up into expansions. You know, we'll, we'll find out uh, later Right. Uh, how that's going to be packaged. Chad is asking, simply targeting. You're right, not even hitting, right? Like, if your attack deals one damage and the enemy has, like, five block, it doesn't matter. They will die. Just instantly. Apropos of nothing. All right. Hey everyone, thanks for being on this live cast with us. Um, I hope I hope you enjoyed learning a little bit about Mega Man. Hopefully you join me for my playtest game that's going to happen uh, immediately after I end this live cast. So without much else to say, thank you so much for watching. It's been me, your host, Margaret DeSantos, also known as Mechanic Rig, and with me has been the ever amazing, ever wonderful, ever Joshy. Or Ithri. Uh, happy gaming, everybody. Happy gaming, and don't forget to reset. Thank you, uh, Mega Man fans. Thank you, and good night.